Hi, my name is Rohit. Welcome to the part two of Advanced Spring Row Add-on. In the first part, we created an add-on called My First Add-on and we ran the add-on on a test project. The first command which we ran on a test project was My First Add-on Setup. What this command did, this command had an effect in this way. It went inside a POM file of the project, which is the Naven dependencies and it add in a spring batch dependency. This is what the my first add on setup command did. The second command which is called as add takes an argument named type which is a class and it goes over there and it basically injects a method and a field. It achieves that by doing this. First of all, it injects a room my first add-on in a sample, which has an IDD file over here, in which it says that, you know, I want to inject sample field and sample method. This code gets injected at compile time in, into sample.java. So that's what we achieved by writing our first room add-on. Now let's quickly go and understand how the add-on really works. So this is the add-on project where we created add-on. The first class is very important. This is the commands class. The command class implements a command marker interface which tells rule that okay this is the class which will handle whatever the user does on the, on the shell. This class does three things. First of all it checks for certain certain condition when to enable this commands which we have. So we have setup command and we have add command. The second thing which it does is it has callbacks whenever user types in command. The third thing it does is it delegates everything to something called as an operation which is referenced over here. So let me tell you about the first one which is a CLI availability indicator. This so write a method which runs a boolean and annotate, annotate it with CLI availability indicator. What this says in short is over here instead of return you need to write a code which tells you about what the condition on the project is. For example the entity add-on over here will have a condition which says only if the user has done the persistence setup then allow user to see entity add-on. So there will be a condition over here. In our case, we don't have any condition. We always want the user to see our add-ons. So we just say CLI availability indicator for two commands. One is the add-on setup. Second thing is the add-on add and show it all the time. This is what this code says. The second code which we, the command which we ran was my first add-on setup. So we just add a callback method and we say CLI command value my first add-on setup and here's a help which says which comes when the hint uh, is typed and it just simply delegates the operation to operations uh, class. Over here this is a slightly more interesting because uh, this command takes an argument. So when I say my first add-on it says that okay I need to have an option called as type which is mandatory and which ultimately Ru, uh, maps it to a Java type because it's a type and it simply delegates this responsibility to operations class. In the next tutorial I will show you details about my first add-on operations and more things.